Jesse gives you a clear framework for defining your strategies. In some cases though, there are multiple ways for performing the same task, such as exiting trades. While this brings flexibility, it might be confusing to beginners. So in this video, I want to show you various ways you have for entering and exiting trades in Jesse. Let's begin by creating a new strategy and name it Golden Cross. All right, so if I open my VS Code and look up Golden, I should find it. And in case you're curious to know where it's located, it's inside my strategies folder. There is only one way of entering trades in Jesse, but it is a two-step process. Assuming you're looking for long positions, you start by defining your entry rule inside the shoot long method, which returns a boolean value. When it returns true, then it is followed by the golang method, which is where you define your actual entry order. An easy way of remembering this is to ask ourselves, should we long this asset? If yes, then let's go long. All right, in case of short positions, we have shoot short and go short methods, but they only work for futures trading. So just to keep it simple, I'm going to trade only long positions in this video. So I'll just remove these because we don't need them. All right, let's write a real world example. This is the chart for BTC USDT on TradingView, and I've added two moving averages. The blue line is the EMA with the period of 20, and the orange one is the EMA with the period of 50. And the time frame of the chart is 15 minutes. Let's say I want to go long whenever the EMA 20 crosses the EMA 50. I'm gonna use Jesse's indicator module, which has already been imported for me. I'll define two new properties. The first one I'm going to call EMA20. Inside it, I'm going to return TA, which is the indicator module of Jesse. And to access the EMA, I will say dot EMA. The first expected parameter of it is candles, which I can pass by saying self candles. And the second one is the period, which I will pass 20. All right, next I will just copy this code and paste it and change 20 to 50. Next, we need to define the shoot long method. I'll check if the EMA 20 crosses the EMA 50. If it does, then I'll return true. Next, I'm going to update the golang method, which is where we define the entry order. When it comes to submitting orders, we need two things, the quantity and the price. I want to keep this example super simple. So as for the entry price, I will just use the current price. As for the quantity, I'll just use half of the existing balance in my account. The capital in my account is in USDT, so I'll need to convert it to BTC. To do that, I'll use the size to quantity utility function of Jesse. And just like the indicator module, the utils module has already been imported for me. The first parameter of it is the position size. Like I said, I want to use half of my capital, so I'll just pass self dot balance and because I want half of it I will multiply this by 0 0.5 and the second parameter is the entry price which I just defined earlier and finally I can submit my entry order because this is for a long position I will say self dot buy equals the first parameter is the quantity and the second one is the entry price and because the entry price of the order is the current price this is going to be a market order because I'm using a market order, when my trading candle closes and the strategy gets executed, I will immediately be sitting on a long position. Okay, that's good, but how do we exit this position? The first way could be to simply close this position whenever the opposite of our entry rule is true. Just to make it simpler, I'm gonna refactor my entry rule. I'll define a new property and call it trend. For an uptrend, I will say if self EMA 20 is above self EMA 50 return 1 and else which means downtrends return minus 1. Then I can refactor my shoot long method into return true when self dot trend is 1. So now one way to exit this trade is this. Whenever a new candle closes we check to see if the trend is downward. If so, then we'll close the position. To write the code for this, I'm going to define the update position method. And inside it, I'm going to say if self trend 
is minus one, then I want to close the position immediately, or in other words, using a market order. To do that, I can use either the self take profit or self stop loss variables. It doesn't really matter, but I'll just use this stop loss. The first parameter is the quantity, which I will use the quantity of my current position by saying self position dot quantity. And the second one is the price because I want it to be a market order. I will pass self dot price. Because it is a common use case to want to close your current position using a market order, Jesse offers a shortcut method for it, and I can call it by saying self.liquidate. Since this is a lot cleaner, I'm going to remove this line. Okay, this sounds good, but what if I knew at which price I wanted to close my position at the time that the position is opened? Maybe I want to exit at two times the range of the current candle. Alright, let me show you what I mean by the range of the candle on an actual chart. If this is the current candle at the time of entering this trade, the range of it is going to be the difference between the low and the high of it. And two times of the range could be somewhere around here. Alright, so I'm going to define a new property and call it current range. It's going to return the high price of the current candle subtracted by the low price of the current candle. So now I can set my exit orders at the time of opening the position. To do that, we're going to have to use the unopen position method. First, let's do the stop loss. The quantity should be the quantity of my current position. And the price will be the current price subtracted by self current range, which we just defined earlier. And because I want two times of that, I'm going to multiply this by two the take profit is going to be very similar. The quantity will again be the quantity of my current position and the price of it will be the current price, but this time added by the current range multiplied by two. All right, so now when the position opens, Jesse will submit both the stop loss and take profit orders right away. Right, we just learned how to both enter and exit a trade. Now let's take it up a notch. Instead of exiting my position all at once, maybe I want to exit half my position at the initial take profit price and exit the other half using some kind of a trailing stop. This might sound a little advanced, but I promise it's incredibly easy to write. To do that, the first thing I need to do is to modify my initial take profit order to only exit half the position size. To do that, all I need to do is to divide the quantity by two. Next, to exit the second half of my position, inside my update position method, I will use this built-in property called reduce count, which tells me how many times the position size has been reduced since the trade was opened. Now, in this case, we only reduce the position once and then we want to close it. So I'll just say if self reduce count is one self sub loss equals the quantity will be the quantity of my current position at this time and the price will be the current price subtracted by self current range right but why is this a trailing stop that's because at this point we know that the opted position method will get executed on every new candle close assuming of course that our stop loss hasn't been executed yet and the position is still open. So every time that the update position gets executed, it will cancel the previous stop loss and submit a new one based on the current price conditions. I will also modify this line into LIF just to make sure that my position won't get closed before the sub price is reached. Right, now just to make sure that my code works, let's try to run a backtest. I will change the strategy to golden cross. The time frame 15 minutes is fine. The symbol is correct and the exchange is also correct. I want to see some charts, so I will enable this option. I will also enable quant stat reports. And then I will change the duration of my backtest to be the first quarter of 2021. All right, let's start the backtest and we get an error. Right, it says the format of the self take profit is invalid. Let's take a look at the strategy and see where I did wrong. Okay, I see my mistake here. 
The price of my take profit order was supposed to be the current price added by the current range property. But instead I wrote current candle. Okay, so with any luck, if I run the backtest again, it should work this time. Alright, it worked just fine. Here's the chart for the equity curve. And here are the metrics, which are negative by the way, which I guess we kind of had it coming. Because first of all, this is an example of strategy and second of all, it's just a work in progress. We can also take a look at the legacy chart, which is useful because it shows us the buy and sell orders executed by Jesse. We also enabled the quantstat reports, so let's take a look at that. And here we have access to a lot of more metrics and charts that are useful for evaluating the strategy's performance. In the next video, we're gonna learn about the concept of filters in Jesse. 